Stephen Anthony Bailey, and I'm from South Bend, Indiana. Um, my mom works at an aerospace engineering plant. Um, she tests parts that go to like NASA. That might be. She might sign an NDA. Maybe I'm not supposed to say that out loud. I grew up not knowing my father, so he was a like a painter for big companies, and uh, I was I was predominantly raised by my grandfather, and he 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 did everything. He worked um, with lathes and factories, and he was a farmer. I grew up part time with him in North Liberty, a small town outside of South Bend on a farm. I was in drama class in, in ninth grade and this kid, Jordan Mullins, asked me if I wanted to um, if I wanted to make a movie for our project. I said, sure. And he said, my friend Bobby makes movies. I make movies with him. He was like, Bobby Crane. And I was like, Bobby Crane? Wait a minute. And uh, I had known Bobby from preschool. That's when I met Bobby and we lost touch because we went to different schools. And then here's Jordan reintroducing me to my old friend, and we uh, we started making movies together. And so I started saving my money with my first few jobs, and I went out and I got a Sony Handycam, it was a mini DV tape, and I would shoot with that. I would I would borrow my grandfather's, you know, big uh, camcorder that had VHS tapes, and my cousin had a Super 8 camera, and we would shoot with that. I, I was predominantly an actor. I always have been, and that's why I picked up a camera in the first place, is because I wanted to be able to practice and be able to build a reel and be able to make films. And, uh, you know, there wasn't enough films for me to be a part of in South Bend, so I wanted to make them as much as possible. And then I got enough, what I thought was enough experience, and I moved to L.A. to do it professionally. And I've been here over seven years. Seven years and some change. My first inspiration was Al Pacino. I remember as a kid I would watch Scarface and I remember seeing that he was doing a trick because I'd seen that same guy in The Godfather and he was the Italian son of Don Corleone. But that's the same guy that's say hello to my little friend. I was like, that, that's a magic trick. That's amazing. I gotta do that. I saw Scarface way too young. I, I think I was probably eight or nine rented it from Hollywood Video down the street from my mom's house. And I, I smuggled it inside and I went into my bedroom and I closed the door and I locked it and I put headphones into my TV which would, uh, you know, and I, it, 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 it came in two tapes because the movie was so long. So I put that first VHS tape and I started watching it and that scene with the chainsaw in the shower, I was like, I shouldn't be watching this but I love this. <laughs> and so I watched that movie and I started, I started doing the voice, you know. I started doing it. I wasn't very as good at it uh, then. I'm not very good at it now, but I loved that. And so I wanted to be a character actor like Al Pacino. And then I remember seeing a picture of James Dean, and someone said, oh, he's from Indiana. And so I started putting my hair back like I do now. And I watched uh, Rebel Without a Cause, and I was like, that's pretty good. And then I saw East of Eden, and I was like, he's the best thing I've ever seen. I, wanted, I want to be him. I want to be James Dean. So I started studying acting and taking it very seriously. I would read acting books in school. I just That's what I would read. I wouldn't, I wasn't doing homework. Not that I'm telling kids not to do homework, but I didn't do homework. I told, I, would, I was in a play, the teachers would know, Stephen's not gonna do homework. He's gonna be reading his lines for the school play. I was very serious about it. Even in high school, I, I was president of the drama club. I just wanted to be James Dean. And then I remember turning 25, which is, he had already made it by then. I hadn't made it as big as him, and I was like, I'm never going to be James Dean. But that's okay. I want to be me. Stay. If you stay in L.A. long enough, something will happen. Justice League told me that. He's an actor. You should look him up. He's fantastic. That's good advice. It's true. My favorite part of my career is making an impact. Um, I've gotten emails from people saying that what I do inspires them and I'm still young in my career and, and they're inspired by you know 
little videos I put on Instagram or, or whatever. They just like, they're, they say that they're inspired based on my work ethic. And then I've also, I did a movie called Until Forever, and I got a lot of people writing me emails that were sick or had lost a loved one to cancer. And that, that, meant, that means a lot to me because I still get those emails. Um, I think that's what you, you want. You want to entertain people, but you, I want to, I want people to have from me what I got from the people that I was inspired by. When I was a kid, I, I was going through a lot of pain. I was, felt very alone, and movies, and actors, and that stuff got me through it. I was alone in my room watching these things, and I was escaping the pain of life. And if I can do that for people, that's that's huge. That's I'd rather do that than dig somebody's ditch or something. Even if I have to make less money, I don't care. Um, don't waste time uh, trying to be perfect or trying to be as good as the movies you see in the movie theaters. Whatever you can make, make that and put it out. Don't be scared of, if people really don't like it, you can take it down and delete it. Or, if you look back on it six years later and you say, I really don't want that up there, then take it down. But right now, no one knows who you are. This is show business, so start showing people something. It's, I, I, I work, I do a lot of things. The blog, the vlog, the this, the that, the stand-up, the theater. I play music. Why do I do it all? I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, I ooze creativity. That sounds gross. But I do. I wake up every day and I have all this creative energy and if I don't use it, I get depressed. I have to express myself. I need it. I need to do this. I do play readings in my living room. Whatever. Because you're not always going to get paid to work. And no one's going to just hand you work. So you have to make your own opportunities. And I want an opportunity every day. I want to do something every day. Some days I don't have the energy or the desire or the inspiration to film something. And maybe I won't, I'm not casting a play at that time. So maybe I'll, I'll do something for Instagram or like I'll pick up my guitar and play that or I'll write a blog or whatever it is. Something creative and I realize like I want to share that with people no matter what. I mean that's what I'm doing right now. I'm sharing this with you. This is, this is an experiment. I just want to be doing something. And it's not... It used to be I would do all this stuff so I could get attention and so I can get a casting director to notice me. I don't care anymore. I'm doing this for me now. And I think that's why. When I started doing it for me, I actually started putting out more. I had a uh, much higher amount of output. And it, I feel better. And I feel like I'm in control of my career and I'm not waiting for a phone call. And I'm not letting somebody tell me what I need to be doing. I'm not letting somebody tell me what project to do. I'll do what I want to do. There's a power in that. I mean, the hardest part about the career is staying in it and realizing what you're sacrificing for a dream that isn't going to come out the way that you want it to. No matter what it is in your head, it's not going to come out just that way. It just doesn't work that way. When I think about myself now, as opposed to when I started, younger me, when I first started, would be like, this is amazing, look at everything you've done, you've, like, you've gone further than I ever thought you would. But me now, the dream keeps growing and changing and altering and becoming something different and bigger and, not, and smaller in certain ways. The hardest thing is staying in it and keeping your faith and keeping your confidence and keeping your, your will and your drive to get up every day and work on something, even if they're not calling your name.